Hi again, I'm finally back. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video. Um, and this one is uh, it's a Honda Pro engine and the GXV 160. Um, the difference with this one is, and I will go in more into it as the video goes on, but the difference is this is off of an HR, HRD 536L uh, four wheel version. So it doesn't, it's belt driven, which the engines that are on the Pro, like the HRH, are shaft driven. So you see there's no light isn't great, but you see there's no shaft coming out the back. I repaired this a few years ago and um, I thought it was all right. And when we've been using it for about half an hour, um, when it gets hot, it won't start again. So rather than messing around, I'm taking the bottom off of this and putting it on an, uh, an, like an HR. HRH shaft driven engine so basically I'm changing the bottom over um, so it's so I can make it um, belt driven the problem I've got is I could have just um, you might think oh, I could just not bother with the shaft and just leave it on there the problem I have is it needs an extra slot in the keyway for the pulley just see it in there probably yeah so um, years ago when I did this engine um, I had a friend of mine cut a bit, he's an engineer, and he cut an extra slot in the crankshaft. So it means I've got to remove the crankshaft out of, I've got to take this part, remove the crankshaft, and put the crankshaft and the bottom back on the top end of the other engine, if you get what I mean. We'll go more into it as we go, um, but basically the first job will be to strip down, carve off, um, blade brake clutch off, exhaust off, um, Probably I'll take the mechanism off, um, flywheel off, uh, yeah, and then I can sort of get it apart. And then bits I won't bother showing you because you don't need to. Well, I'll start off sort of um, the video kicking when um, I'm to the sort of bare engine. So when I'm taking off the flywheel, even though I've loosened the flywheel on this already, I've got to take this off um, so I can sort of strip it all, all down and, you know, so off. I'm left with just a bare engine block. Uh, I'm not unsure what the problem was. Um, I didn't have a compression tester. I do have one now, but I took it off the mower before I got the compression tester. So I've got to do this work now because I'm not putting it all back on and using it for half an hour. It's just too much time. So it has got a new carb on. I thought that was the issue. It ran really well with that on it. And I thought we'd solved the problem, but we hadn't. But from now on, I can test the compression from cold and compression from hot. That's what I'm thinking. It's got some valve issue or something. I've got this engine, the, well, basically the top half of it were a load of um, upper engines once, and uh, it could have been a could have been a dud. That's why it was done away with. We'll, we'll have a look at that at the end. But um, yeah, if you um, want to stick around, and you can see how basically how to change a crankshaft on a Honda GXV one. 160 I must have said 190 earlier it's 160 um yeah they're not too hard it's just um I just get the timing back right and everything because uh, there is a few differences in the um with the bottom of the engine but I don't think there's much because I can just slide this bit back on but we'll talk through as as we're doing the video so I'll catch you soon um so yeah I've stripped it down now we're on to um stripping down that engine now so it's um then bolts all around there. I probably will get a. I have drained the oil, but I probably will get a slight bit of leakage from what's the odd bit left in there. So let's just position that on the rag. We're still in shot. That's good. So, um, yes, I get these. I'm done. They're 12 mil. And they're not very tight, so actually I'll impact them when I've just loosened them to get them off quicker. So yeah, I reckon it was about three years ago I um, did this before. Um, and I all thought it successful. All I thought, the only problem I thought it had was a, a noisy uh, blade brake clutch bearing. But um, it doesn't seem to be the case. The thing is, it runs lovely up to, until uh, you stop it. Then it doesn't want to start again. So uh, problem I've had a few times on mowers, but now I've got a compression tester. At least I always put it down to... Um, valves or um, piston rings or something. I think I've got all them undone now. 
sometimes there is one lurking in there you miss but I should really use a I should really use a rubber hammer for this but I have done it on the hard of it and that was nice and easy to get off so let's have a look um, make sure you just keep everything together it's like the thrust washer goes on there that I've got that always falls out a little bit of rubber thing it probably wouldn't massively make any difference but I'll remember where that goes um, at some point I'll work out where that goes so I'll just put that to the side at the moment so as you can see we're to the in internals of the engine that quickly um, so there's not a lot really I've got to do because I've took the, um, the flywheel off and that um, let's just turn it round and I'll try to show you the, the timing marks if I can find the tissue they've got too much in them to be fair but it seems a bit more of a daunting job than it actually than it actually is because you've got to strip so much down I'm hoping I can save the old gasket and use that but I'm not quite sure that's going to be the case I thought timing could be out where it was causing a problem, but I can't see that's going to happen because um, it was it starting that's so good and it never kicked back or it run really smooth. Yeah, and it's dead on there. I'll try to show you that. You can probably let me try to get the light on the subject for you. There you go. Um, Right, you can see that that mark there, and a very faint one circle on there as well, and they have to line up. So um, you can probably see it better with our yeah, the little faint one just there on the smaller cog, and then the bigger cog that one. So timing was right. So now I can um, I can move the cam. I'll try to. Then the uh, um, push rods could come out, they haven't, but they could. So, yeah, there's a cam. Where are we? There. So, I'll just open a bit of rag to save getting damaged. <laughs> and now, we're all we're down to now is actually. Oh, let me just show you this. Um, Just in there, there's the two bolts that hold the conrod to the to the crankshaft, and that's it. Once I've undone that, that is it. I'll just take that little bit of excess oil out of there, which is a bit more because it must have been hidden when I drained it. Don't want to start getting. Uh, I've done it more sensible way than you. I usually go gun ho into it and get covered in oil and everything. I think I'll, I think a pair of glove change will be worth it as well. Um, I'll probably reposition the camera and then back to you in a second. Um, yeah, you can see that bolt there. That's the one I've got to undo. So I'm not sure what tool I'm going to get on the job for that. Probably the small socket I'll get on that. I haven't put the new gloves on yet. Don't want to get all the muck on you really you know gloves are quite cheap nowadays um, for packs of disposable gloves so it's always worth wearing off you don't want to get your skin covered in oil and all the mucky stuff so um where are we Too tight for that one, so what I'm going to do is get the. Um, hopefully, if this fits in there, which I'm stuck at the minute finding what I need. There we go. See if the larger one goes in there. Which it does. This 
one. How well you can see that, I'm going to twist around a bit. So there, at least I can go in with the small one now. Been meaning to do this for about a week or so. I've got someone that actually wants the mower, but um, just haven't had, lost the love for this a little bit lately. So I'm trying to get back into it. Need to get stuff gone. That's the main reason. Um, yeah, just busy with work and that, and just haven't really had the interest to come out here. Um, but push myself tonight and um a bit of a bench clip that's the worst thing coming out of nine you have to be able to mess before you even start but I'm here I'm out here so I'm at least getting on with something um a lot of my stuff's gonna have to go I've decided a lot of it's going I don't want my unit full up full up over winter time and that so a lot's gonna have to go I shall keep a bit few, I shall keep some of the sort of better mowers um to well ones with a better resale probably better say that before I mention hey yeah I've got quite a few haters and their resale value is fairly good. They might land have been sold next year now, but I'll probably keep about 12, 12 15 mowers and the rest will, will go. I'll just take the odd easy to take off spare off of them, like carburetors and recalls and all that. Um, but it's been a fairly busy year, even though I haven't really took on any new customers for work. But um, we have got that off now, so that is all... You can see the bolts out there, so I just got a. It's nearly come. I just have to prise that a little bit. Just be careful. You don't want to mark. You don't want to mark anything to too much down here, but just a bit of gentle persuasion won't hurt. So now we have really got that. I can push the con rod. Push the all up in the ball for some reason it doesn't want to go. Go to its point. So then I've got to find a spot where there we go. We have the crank out. So you're yeah, just looking around there. It's in pretty good nick around there. I think it come out, I don't know what it come out of um I think it might have come out of uh, an old HRD. Two one, not HRD, HR216, the old one, but they are the same. Um, I've replaced one in my mower before and it's the same, so um, I'll put that out of the way, wrap it up and put it out of the way. I think I'm basically done with this engine now. That might be the odd bit I've got. That might be the odd bit I've got to take off it, but see there. Um, actually, as I'm not going to use this again, it won't quite come out. I'm just going to see piston for where, but need the aircon, I've got it stuck now, but anyway, I'm not worried about that engine, so we'll have a look at it at a later date, so yeah, that's this um, part, that's this part sort of done, and um, I'll be along with the, it'll be the reinstall in the other engine, but I'll probably show you a bit of how, how they are different, and well I've just about, well actually I think I have actually got this other, the second engine stripped right down, this is the one with, like I was saying, with the shaft out the back, um, like I said, you could have just I could have just took that off and left the shaft bit there because it only comes out a tiny bit. But the problem is, I'll actually quickly show you. Oh. If you look on that crankshaft, there's one um, keyway hole, which um, does the braid blade blade brake clutch. If I get the other one quickly. <coughs> That has got two, that's the one I had cut into it there, and that runs the belt pulley. So you can see now why this one, need, this crankshaft needs to go in this engine because I need that there. So um, these old, um, these engines are few and far between anyway because most of them have got that on it and most of them are the rear shaft drive. Um, there's not too many um, HRD um hrd 536 is around now or 535 they might have even done as well there's not too many around um 
but they they still do make them but i think don't think they're hydrostatic but uh, they must have a gearbox on them still so they still have this type of engine so these then the correct engine does they are, they are still on mowers but you know nowhere near as, as many as with the shaft so and i hope you understand what i meant um so yeah i've undone them i'm not going to take it apart till tomorrow because um it's getting quite late now there's a gasket i've got off the other engine i'm gonna see what the gasket's like on this one so um yeah um so we'll have a look and see what the gas is like, see if this is savable. If this is savable, I won't have to buy one. I have got this stuff up here. But it's quite expensive and I don't particularly want to undo that because once you undo it, it goes wild around the top. So I'd like to have to do enough with it, but if I have to use it, I have to use that. But um, yeah, the next job is, is to get that base off. I had a job, I had a job to undo that bottom bolt. I managed to bang it was 14 mil I managed to bang a 13 mil on it because it kept slipping and then afterwards because the engine was off I had a job getting the flywheel off but that's all done and um, I, I did all that off camera so yeah my next job is just to just get the bottom off then I start changing things over um I decided actually I was just about to pack up and then I decided I'm gonna take that um, bottom off so I know what the so I know what the gasket is like. So I've actually put everything away. So bear with me a few seconds, just while I just get the, I need that one. Just get the socket out and the impact out. It's going to take me a second. Yeah, you're in shot. So let's just get these off. I've kept all the spares off the other end. That will fit my work, these will fit my work mower, even that shaft, they're really expensive. So, it's genuine Honda ones though, anyway. And um, let me just check. I think that's all done there. So, let's just have a, a tap with the hammer. I've got one here. I did it the same place as last time. Like I said, this isn't really ideal, but I should use a rubber mallet, but we've had. Started to split. So let's, if I just tap it carefully around, it would help if I took that bolt out, wouldn't it? Ah, uh, you probably noticed that actually. And <laughs> said, Oh, why didn't he do that bolt? Well, I've done it now. Sometimes it's easier to do it. We're getting there slowly. You saw that pop off, so let's have a look. Take some off slightly to so save any bits dropping. Always a tough little bit where it's, it's gone rusty. The gasket is broke annoyingly. I'm doing this a little bit. Shouldn't really be banging that, but it's done quite got it off. Yeah, just to um, point out again, don't use a hard hammer on it. I have, but don't, because uh, I didn't particularly need this bit. This bit, um, oh, that's where that little bit went. You probably need a better light on the subject, actually, but it's also that's where that little rubber bit slipped in there, so that's handy to know. Um, 
so yeah don't use don't use a hard hammer use a rubber hammer but i have and i've got away with it because i don't particularly need the bottom bit and so this will all have a good clean up now the gasket has has broke um so it's a it's a decision whether to use the other one or um yeah use the other gasket or use some gasket sealant and stuff So yeah, yeah, it's just that on to that um that that's come out nice and easy. I'll show you the difference of them tomorrow when I get experience back on this. Um bring the piston down because I've got to take that out and clean like I said, clean it all up. But that's where I'll leave tonight. I did a little bit extra in the end. Um so I have at least um strip this one down now. I might might be a couple of days if I decide to order a gasket, I'll have a look on good old ebay or something and see if um good old ebay i say um but um yeah that's basically where i get parts from they are are handy i am a little bit concerned whether that was on the other one yes it was when i took it off it was stuck to the actual rather than stuck to there it was stuck to the the sumps at the bottom of the sump side so yeah leave it there um, off camera I probably will just undo them because you saw me do that on the other one and then yeah we'll be stripped down ready to put the other bits back in so I'll catch you soon um, Hi again back to it um, I haven't, didn't do anything on this yesterday um, and um, I'm back on it tonight so let me just find some gloves which I haven't got a clue about but yeah, I've got them. Um, I can't do too much because the new gasket still hasn't come that's the old one on there the chicken's coming to see me so um, what I can do though, I can take the um, crank out of the engine I'm going to put on the mower and I can put the other one in and I can get the timing right and I can um, basically do this part. I can't put the sump on, I'll just close the chicken out, the door keeps back in as well. Um, so um, where I got to last time, it was them couple of bolts. there and there so I'll undo them too oh I've, they're finger tight anyway now get rid of that gasket and um, yeah I've got a new gasket on um, order so it should be I reckon it should be here tomorrow hopefully that's the case because then that means it will be um, here for the weekend for me to crack on with this because there's not too much to do to get it back together um, there is obviously all the sort of auxiliary parts on it. The exhaust is still on it. Um, there'll be the timing just to um, adjust. I can do that right at the end anyway. Um, let me see if I can just get you a little bit more light on the subject. Yeah, that's a bit better. Um, but it's not that exciting what I'm doing at the moment anyway. All I've just got to do is get this crank out. So yeah, looking at the other the piston I took out, I'm thinking perhaps it was um, the piston a bit scratched. Who knows, that other engine um, could well have um, been run low of oil at some point. Or, um, well, that's quite likely over the span of an engine's life. Someone's let it run low. So that could be why it got took off the mower in the first place. So I remember I bought, I think I bought, I don't know, about... 20, 20 engines for 80 quid or something that was years ago um just need to try and see if i can get this in the right position oh it is off now so i want to make sure that's kept the right way i think it i think they probably are only one way but yeah there's a little line there if you can see a little line just there and that little line will fit on match the line on the um, con rod so i'll just lay that there so it is right though um there is a little bit of muck in the engine i think that's probably down to me i'm just gonna now just ease the piston up the bore if i can but yeah that's gone up there all right so, yeah. so if i can turn oh, sorry if 
I can just turn the crank to just release it. We're not far off, I can tell. You're seeing this live and it ain't going brilliantly at the minute. Wedge, I think it's going to have to go back in. I think what I've gone and done is got that over the wrong side. Perhaps it will still push up the, the bore a little bit. Haven't done one for a while, but I think I'm probably about there now. If I can just ease it round enough. And wedge the engine up just a bit higher. Ah, oh, there we go. I think that will do it. For some reason I come out for end, I don't. I keep wasting it at the moment, that's not helping. So let me see what get that out. There we go. Knew it'd come out. Um, so that one can be put away because that will fit my HRHs. And that's a good crank and it's straight. I'm sure they're straight. It looks nice and straight to me. So where are we? There. So I'm going to put that away and that one will be um, kept for, for spares. They're not cheap if you have to have one, if you've uh, been, uh, been crank. So I'm going to turn the camera off now. You've seen that live. Um, um, and I'm going to clean out all the little bits of rubbish and all that in there, clean the gasket off, and then I'll install the new one and do the timing. Um, as you can see, it's um, quite nice and clean now. So um, let me just zoom you in a little bit. So um, the first thing in will be, I believe, it will be the, yeah, the crank cleaned it all up with some parts cleaner and everything I'm just gonna put just a little well, I'll show you while I'm doing it just a little bit of oil just around there that's the bit that runs in that bearing you can see there so just help a little bit and I shall put some there as well where the the conrod runs around just to sort of give it a helping hand for a start so we're ready to put this in um so let's see if i can get it right hopefully you are in shot yep well that's in now so i've just got to make it so it sits um right on there and it's going to be a little bit tricky just to, actually I think what I'll do is pull the piston out because I need to get to where the bolts are. Without trapping my finger, we've got that in, I'll show you. Um, yeah, we're recording. So um, I got that in. I ran out of um, phone storage, so um, so I had to go and delete some bits off. It's my old phone, so there's loads of bits and pieces on there. I'd forgot about. Um, I don't know if the videos ever went up or not. I can't remember. But anyway, this is the next piece in. Easy enough. Just um, put over there like so. It'll slot in nicely, which it has slotted in really nice. And then just tighten up them. Two bolts. Just struggling a little bit to start. Ain't got much room in there. Um, there probably is a torque setting for this, um, but on this, it's um, my torque setting tight. <laughs> so um, 
I wouldn't have a torque wrench small enough anyway for it, so they would just be tight. There's no tabs or nothing on them, so um, uh, they just go tight, and that's that's how it is. So um, just um, tight. Bear with me a second. I'll just I'll just get them done, and then I'll be back with you. Um, just while um, I haven't tightened them yet, but I just thought I'd show you. I've tightened them. I thought I could do with a ratchet spanner. There you go, a little buy. So we'll see if it's any good. I'll get the number 10 out and see if it's any good. So the little ratchet strat, uh, spanner is working okay. I'll just tighten them. I can tighten, just double check them right, right at the end anyway, before I put some back on, but there, about there. Now, what I'll do is check the engine turns over, which it is turning over nicely. I say, I know why that is. That, um, I had pull cord in the plug in the plug gap, so I could um, undo the bolt. Little tip for you. Something I found off of YouTube before. Um, so yeah, we're right there now. So now we've um, uh, come to the. Um, where are we? A camshaft. I'll show you the difference. I might have shown you before, but. I'll show you again that is the difference where are we i can see okay with the light see it's got that cog on the end that cog on this one um runs the rear um output shaft which i don't need on this engine so that's why that's one of the main differences so that cam camshaft won't be no good for my needs i've got to use the one i took out the other engine so um let's have a go and see how it will fit in. So now this is um this is the point where I have to come up. I have to mark them two dots up. It's a bit hard for me to actually show you, but they are marked up. I've got it dead right the first time. And then I can go any other way. Can I move one more around there? Or is that it? No, that is it. I'll show you close up, hopefully you can see okay. Ooh. Get a bit of light on it. This is a bit people will want to know if they're doing it. You can just about see, you can see on the big cog, you can see there's a more prominent um, mark. On the other one is a slight round circle, but that's where they match up. So that's the timing right. It's as simple as, as simple as that. So, all I have to do now, well, I don't think I can actually do much more now. I think it's to about the point where um, I've got to really wait for the new gasket. All I can do really is clean the sump out. Um, if I clean the sump out, um, it's all ready to put back together. I'll just show you what I use. If I can find it quickly. Here we go. I will get the I will get the when I get the gasket obviously I'll use the gasket but I use this stuff um Hylamar gasket joint in compound um it's brilliant stuff I remember using it years ago when he used to help my dad with cars and I've um, got it from eBay and um yeah um it's really good stuff I used it on the side of my um uh the Honda chipper engine the engine on my chipper and yeah, it's good stuff. So yeah, it's, it's not the cheapest, I don't think, but uh, apparently, I haven't tried it, but apparently it's good for if you fit something together and then want to take it off, because it never really goes hard. It doesn't ever really set hard. It's just, but it's got great joint in qualities in it. Well, that's what it says. So, and um, for my use, I can't, I, I can't fault it when I've used it. So anyway, we've done that. We've done that. All I shall do now, I'll switch off the camera. I'll clean the sump. Um, I'll just double check them bolts are tight and then like I said I'm waiting for for the gasket then I can get it back together get the auxiliaries back on it and get it um, back on the mower so I'm back on this um, Honda uh, GXV 160 engine and um, the new gasket has come I've already um, put the Hylamar on there and stuck the gasket on I've put the Hylamar um, on the, the other side so 
we're about there now and um, just make sure that that isn't kicked out there it's a governor just make sure it isn't kicked out and it's in because when you put it on you've got to make sure that goes between there and um, the timing right i've just double checked it the thrust washer that goes on there you can just see there make sure that's on that's, that's important um and basically all this all it is now is just slipping the casing on and bolts in and then i'll tighten it up um this stuff like i said it doesn't really set um but i want to clamp it together tonight so it um is ready for tomorrow so i can um, get it fitted up i've um, double checked the bolts um the conrod bolts and they're all good and um, all tight so yeah i'll put you on the um the tripod and i'll get that um slipped on So let me just zoom you in a little bit. I'm, I might actually be in the way a little bit when I'm putting this on, but um, I don't think it's going to be too bad at all. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit sort of upright like that. Check you on shot still. So yeah, we should be good, good to go. So. I'm just going to make sure that that governor bit goes in place. I'm just going to move it slightly. Still in shot. Yeah. Could do a bit better light on the subject there. There we go, I'm happy with that. Let's go up and let just a gentle tap. So there's a dowel that goes on it. I'll tell you what I did yesterday. I test fitted it and I trapped a trapped a towel in it. I think, I think we're all good. I'll soon know, I'll put a couple of bolts in. Sorry there, you probably was a little bit um the light probably affected you a little bit, but you've got you must have got the gist of it. I can put them all in now actually, there's no reason not to. I'll just start them all first. one now what I'll do is just get the little little socket we're almost there now must have um, seen what you need to see to do this job Got nice and tight, I'm just double checking them. Yeah, the little um little tool got them nice and tight. I'm 
Well, it might have been a little bit difficult for you to um, see because I was sort of moving it around and that, but um, I hope you've got the, yeah, hope you've got the gist of it. Um, it's all on there now. I'm happy with that. They're tight. Um, I'll, all I'm going to just do it tonight is just wipe off some of that blue stuff around the side and then um, this should be good to go. Um, basically, just fitting the stuff back. I won't show you that in, in this video. The purpose of this video is to show you how to change a um, crankshaft and there's not too much to it to be fair it's just making sure you want that governor right you don't want to you don't want that governor to be um i put one together once and managed to damage a governor so always make sure that that little lever gets between um otherwise it rip like hell if you um uh yeah if you get the governor wrong it'll just rev full whack and not function as it should so um, it's important to get that right, but yeah, um, I'm about there on this video. So I'll show you the mower running. That'll probably be on a different video, but I hope this has been of some use to you. Um, that's it, GXV, that's it, GXV 160 Honda. Um, and yeah, I hope that's been of some use to you. Um, so if you've got bent crankshaft, that's how you, how you change it. And that I think, I'm right in saying, the crankshafts in these GXV engines even the old type that were on the HR two one sixes and that from the eighties, they're all they're all the same. Or I found them the same because I've actually fitted one out of an old one into my mower I use. So, yeah, not uh, not much of a job. It's just the difficult with this one. The problem with this one was, like I said, because of that shaft and I need the pulley on it. So that's why I'm having to do it on this. Um, well, it's about a week on since I did the, um, the engine work. Um, it's all back together now. Um, I've tested it. All works fine. Um, the um, I put a new ignition coil on it. Uh, it's got a new carburetor on it. It's got um, blade sharpening. The back wheel cogs have been greased and that. Um, yeah, it's got new oil in, obviously, because the engine work. So sort of everything's been been done on this one. Um, we had to sort our bag for us. So I had a little, a little bit of a stitch stitch to repair but that's all, that's all fine that'll work well i've got someone that wants this so um, i'm quite eager to to get it done um so yeah it's about there now so i'll text him to see if he still wants it because it was a few weeks ago that he asked but if not i'll um sort it elsewhere but yeah please get this one done it's been a bit of a bit of a chore i thought i'd already done it all that time ago but it just proved the top end of the engine was no good but you'll see it running now it starts and runs well and I'm happy with it, so um, I won't talk anymore at the end of the video. So we'll leave it here after you've seen it running. I'll leave it here. So thanks for watching. I'll be along with another video again soon.